Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. And this time we've got another book review. And this, and we are reviewing probably one of my most fun books that I've ever read. I, I, I can't really, I'm not even sure if I can necessarily rank it. It's just, it stands on its own level in a lot of different ways. The way, everything about this book, the way it's structured, the way it's written, the way, the, the way it, its content is handled. But of course I am talking about Abraham Lincoln, Vampire Hunter by Seth Graham Smith. And I'm sorry, I nearly forgot the name, but <laughs> but anyway, what can I say about this book? Oh, so many things. First of all, I'm gonna kind of geek out a little bit about it, but first let me talk about what's so brilliant about this book. Obviously, a lot of us, if we paid attention to history, we do know for the most part, most of Abraham Lincoln's life and most of what he did as a president, okay? But we don't really know a lot of details um, uh, concerning his earlier life and stuff that's that happened outside of politics So like one th honest thing I love about this book is that it humanizes Lincoln You know someone who has not been someone who has not been used as a point of view for you know a piece of fiction You know and it makes and it really puts a nice little twist on humanizing someone like Lincoln and I really like it the best the but the best brilliance that I can attribute to this book is that it it is, for the most part, almost to the full spectrum, very historically accurate about a lot of things. The only twist is that is that there's vampires involved. <laughs> so that's what's so unique about it is like everything that concerning it starts off when Lincoln's very young and obviously goes all the way to his death. Um, but the way it's structured, the only way I can really describe it is like imagine you went on a scavenger hunt. And you picked up like, and it was all you were picked up picking up certain things that all concern the same topic. In this case, Abraham Lincoln's life. So you may find like a newspaper clipping there, or a diary there, or a letter over there, or something. And then you compiled it all together, and you got basically what this book is because it is structured kind of like a book. There are chapters, and there is a narrator speaking, but a lot of it is just like letters and direct correspondence and stuff that they found that Lincoln actually wrote or what real people actually wrote. And they put it in this book and tweaked it a little bit to fit in the vampire narrative. And that's what I really like about this book. It's like, if you wanna get someone, if you wanna get especially a young person into history, this is a real good book to start out with. I felt like it was an easy read. I couldn't put it down. I mean, honestly, I was just enthralled by how Seth put all of this information together and made a story concerning vampires. But, you know, or vampires are actually on... Um, the vampires are actually the backdrop of the story. The forefront is Abraham Lincoln himself. But also the at the forefront of the story is... Abe, Abraham Lincoln in his relationship with a guy named Henry and Henry gets introduced very early in the book and from what I can tell he was an actual real historical figure that was around during um, during during some of President Abraham and President Abraham Lincoln's life sorry I cannot talk and that's also a key aspect of this book but like you know the gimmick is and I'm gonna got, kinda get into a little bit of spoiler territory, but I feel like it's not really spoilers because I'm talking about something that, has, that is historically true. But basically, the gimmick with Henry is that he's a vampire. And of course, originally in the original, in real life, he was not a vampire. And obviously one thing that's been historically true about Abraham Lincoln's life is that he had a young son who died very early in childhood. And the official record was that he died from some sickness. I can't remember what it is. I don't know if it was like malaria or chicken pox or something. I don't, I don't recall at all right now at the moment. But the thing that actually killed him in the book was a vampire. And that set Abraham Lincoln off on his life of being a vampire hunter. And that's how Henry gets involved. And it kind of treats Abraham Lincoln like a kind of like a small time action hero. And yes, I, something I have to mention, I have seen the movie. And I'm not going to be one of those people that's going to try and compare the two because, um, you know, I very much am in that camp of people that believe when it comes to adap adaptations of a book, it's a separate work from the original story itself. You know, you admire the movie for what it is. And, you know, I I enjoyed it for the most part. I, I, I say it with some respect because I feel like it was a nice piece of entertainment and 
all that stuff. That being said, of course, the the book in this case is way better. Oh my god. They took too many liberties in the movie as far as, like, basically, you know, I talk about Abraham Lincoln being, you know, almost kind of like a superhero in the book, but in the movie, he's almost like Superman. Like, <laughs> you know, it gets kind of nuts after a while. But, you know, it is what it is. But at the same time, it's it's not a bad movie, but the book is amazing. And, I, you know, if I, if I haven't said already, I cannot recommend something like this to younger readers to get them interested in history. Not even necessarily reading, but to get them interested in history. Because the twist with the vampires is so brilliantly done and so flawless. There was no hiccup, guys. Not once did I doubt the... No, not once did I doubt anything about the book. I felt like it was real, like I was reading real history, but it was, you know, was vampires that were at the forefront. And I apologize if I've mentioned zombies by accident at one point. I'm talking about vampires because this is vampires. Zombies is another story. But yeah, so yeah, again, very good book. Highly, highly recommended. Very quick, easy read. Nothing too, nothing too stressful not, or anything like that. And you know, something I have to say about, uh, some, one thing I have to give credence to this book as well is, yes, it did kind of spark my interest in history a little bit too, but it kind of sparked my interest in Abraham Lincoln a little bit. Um, I actually have a small collection of selected writings by him, and I gotta say, I'm so enthralled by the, how people's writing style was back then, and, you know, it's just so unique to see that, you know, uh, a, a writing style and penmanship and penmanship of a time long gone, you know, and I feel like this book tapped into that as well. You know, it feels very antiquated, but it also feels very classic and stylish in a lot of ways. You know, it's almost like, you know, it's like reading a piece of historical, uh, historical fiction, but like almost like it could be almost like a, a, a Amer an Americanized anime. If you want me to be completely honest, it's like so brilliant in so many different ways. I cannot praise this book book enough. Highly recommend it. Go buy it. Go check it out. Maybe continue the rest of the franchise. Or I say franchise. There's been other books with this type of theme adapted to it, where you know it's some type of nonfiction story, but with some weird gimmick like vampires or zombies or whatever that are thrown into the mix and. Very, very well done, in my opinion. So, I can't say more. I can't say enough, like I said. So, ch go check it out for all by all means, and I will see y'all again soon.